everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Sonia and today we're going to talk about vitamin D, what it does for you and how it can help you boost your immunity. So let's get on with it and just remember that my channel talks about things like health, lifestyle trends and travel. So if you like those things, you need to subscribe and I have a video every Thursday that comes out and hopefully you have subscribed. Okay, so humans get vitamin D from things like fatty, oily fish such as salmon and sardines. Now I'm not much of a sardine lover myself. Uh, salmon, yes, uh, and then of course a lot of other foods don't contain a lot of vitamin D. Uh, but the great thing is that vitamin D is manufactured through this, our skin. So we can get our vitamin D from the sun. So what do we need to do? Do we strip off and sun ourselves? Well, we could. However, you know, here in Australia, we've been taught that if we don't want to get skin cancer, we need to put sunscreen on. We need to put hats on and we also need to cover up as well. So you won't see a smart Australian out in the sun sunbanking because they fear that they will get skin cancer. And rightly so, nobody wants to die from melanoma. So what can we do for our skin photolysis? instead of sunshine because that's what it's called the sunshine vitamin because this photolysis process takes place when the sun hits our skin it gets converted to vitamin d3 okay so if you're not sitting in the sun and if you're um, in a location a geographical location where there isn't a lot of sun like the uk i lived there for a year is sun deficient. I was very sad that I had to follow the sun in my house up the stairs just to see some sun. And then at the end of the day, the sun would come out nice and bright and then disappear. And it was as if it was saying, ha ha, this is what you missed all day. However, some like to think that here in Australia, or if you live in a sunny area, that you don't have to worry about getting vitamin D that you're right, you'll be right. That's not true. Uh, studies actually show that um, Oceania countries, so these are Australian, New Zealand, and Pacific Islands, also have vitamin D deficiencies. So, so how do you know you're deficient in vitamin D? Very simple. Ask your GP to get you a blood test. And while he's there, get your magnesium level done as well, because you need magnesium to convert vitamin D. So then it's win-win. So um, vitamin D is checked or the level is checked by a simple blood test. Normal rates are actually estimated on the population that you're in. Uh, however, anything less than 30 millimoles in a blood test is considered deficient. And for the best optimum turnover of um, bone mineral density and um, bone turnover and muscle strength, anything from 50 to 75 is considered optimal. Now, whether you can get to these levels just by sun and eating is questionable. So of course, supplementing with vitamin D is then important. So why is vitamin D so important? Well, vitamin D helps us with uh, our bone uh, minerals. So things like, you know, um, osteoporosis, fractures, um, bone loss are all caused by a vitamin D deficiency. So not only can vitamin D3 help us with our calcium homeostasis and bone development, but it also has a hormone that has a number of effects. So it also helps regulate cellular growth glucose metabolism, immune function, and immune function in many tissues and organs such as the brain, 
the chest, bones, muscles, and the gastrointestinal tract. So a low vitamin D3 status. And when I'm talking about vitamin D, I'm talking about vitamin D3. So when you hear me say vitamin D, that's what I'm speaking about. So a low vitamin D3 status has been reported to cause insulin resistance, diabetes development, cancer, cardiovascular diseases, autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, infectious diseases, chronic pain, psychological disorders such as depression. And in addition to all that, women with low levels of vitamin D are predisposed to polycystic ovary syndrome, endometriosis, infertility, breast and ovarian cancer. Wow. Vitamin D actually is like major, major vitamin that we need in our bodies. So, so who are the people at risk? So it's common in certain risk groups such as children with a low birth weight, so they're either premature or they're small for their gestational age. Uh, pregnant women, older women and non-Western immigrants are in particular risk groups for vitamin D deficiency. So also the vitamin, uh, the ability for our dermis to uh, metabolize or synthesize vitamin D, uh, the, the sun into vitamin D actually decreases with age. So uh, aged people or aged persons and particularly those in nursing homes that don't get outside a lot um, are at risk of actually being vitamin D deficient. Um, why am I telling you about this vitamin D right now? Why is it so important? I have been telling all my family, all my friends, they need to be taking vitamin D. Why? Because it has shown to be effective treatment in acute respiratory in infections such as influenza, and what is COVID-19? It is a type of influenza. And it has also been effective in the disease tuberculosis or TB. So studies have showed that in, uh, patients who have had TB have benefited by vitamin D. Uh, whether it be in prevention of um, exacerbation of symptoms or in treatment, in conjunction with the treatment, they have had a better outcome with a vitamin D protocol with that. Um, and also what they've found is influenza is higher in populations that have a low vitamin D level. So those who are vitamin D deficient are more likely to have influenza. So I'm telling you this so that you can look after your health, you can look after your immunity, you can go and get your blood levels checked and you can supplement and that way take care of yourself and give your body the best immune boosting um, position that it can possibly have to fight any nasty influenza bugs such as influenza A, B or COVID-19. Okay, here in Australia, we are coming into our winter season, which is our flu season. We need to be looking after our health. We need to do what we can to prevent disease. And, you know, vitamin D does all these wonderful things. Why wouldn't you? supplement to make sure that you have the best possible outcomes. And a study recommended that there should be further research into vitamin D supplements to help prevent, reduce or improve the clinical course of acute respiratory infection. Now, this is so important. So the suggested dosages were 2,000 international units for those at risk, the elderly, people with asthma, and of course, this amount was adjusted for children. So why not? Why not supplement? So go out, have your test, be checked. Other interesting things that I found upon my research were that 
UTIs or urinary tract infections can be helped or prevented with vitamin D. Those with an autoimmune disease um, can benefit from vitamin D. So diseases such as multiple sclerosis or MS and rheumatic, uh, rheumatoid uh, diseases as well. Um, vitamin D actually reduces preeclampsia in women. So if you're pregnant, planning to get pregnant, you know, if you want a good outcome for you and your baby, get your vitamin D levels checked. Uh, and also that dry eye is considered a localized autoimmune disease of the eye and can be helped with vitamin D. So I hope this information has been helpful for you today. And I really do hope that you take this on board and, you know, get supplementing with vitamin D and have a lovely, healthy body to prevent uh, your risk of acquiring any acute respiratory infection. So that's it for me this week. Stay safe and I'll see you next week. Bye.